Christians in Arizona and elsewhere are being explicitly discriminated against for their faith, but I think we've actually got good reason to be hopeful. Dylan Mulvaney performed a variety show this week celebrating a full year of quote unquote transition from a man to what he calls a girl. We will analyze that. And then I have an earnest and sincere plea for Dylan. YouTuber Shane Dawson is chronicling his journey with unethically using a surrogate to make children. He's got a really disturbing history, too, that makes this whole situation even worse. All of this and more on this episode of Relatable, which is brought to you by our friends at Good Ranchers. Go to GoodRanchers.com. Use code Allie for a discount. That's GoodRanchers.com. Code Allie. Hey guys, welcome to Relatable. Happy Thursday. If you're watching this on YouTube, yes, I am draped in my blanket today. I usually just have my blanket over my legs, but it is so cold. It is so cold (laughs) in this studio. And I usually wear a long sleeve shirt or a jacket for this reason. Today, I forgot because it's actually kind of warm outside. I forget that I need to dress for an icy tundra when I am recording this podcast. Um, But speaking of studios, again, just another announcement. Next week, we will be in our new studio. A lot of you, for some reason, thought that this was our new studio when I posted on Instagram some pictures yesterday. I guess you haven't been tuning in on YouTube. But no, this has been our temporary set as that new set has been being built. Um, This one has been a great temporary set. That one though, I mean, this is not even, it's not even in the same realm. I'm so excited for you to see it. Monday's episode is going to be fun. We're going to have a giveaway with some new merch that we have and also some uh, merch, some products from our favorite sponsors. And then also I have a fun announcement for you guys in addition to the studio set reveal. So it's been about five years of Relatable. It's just time for a refresh, a refresh of the music too. I know some of you guys are sad about that, but that's okay. That's okay. It's time. There's going to be new relatable font and new relatable brands and it's just going to be, it's going to be really fun. And the next week we've got some good guests coming up in the next couple of weeks for our new set. All right, let's get into what we are discussing today. The first thing I want to talk about is something that is going viral, of course, on social media. And I understand that a lot of you are tired of hearing about this person. And I'll explain why I think it's actually important to talk about him. And that is Dylan Mulvaney. We won't spend all of our time um, on this particular topic And, you know, part of it is also that he probably likes to be in the news and he likes a lot of attention. And so why are we giving him airtime? And I totally understand that. But I do think that Dylan Mulvaney, if you don't know who that is, he is the TikTok star who documented the so-called days of girlhood. Now, this is a grown man. Okay, this is a grown man who looks like a grown man. And he is saying that he is transitioning into not just a woman, but a girl. And so for the first year of his transition, he said that it was the days of girlhood. So he would post these videos on TikTok where he uh, talked about being a girl. And some of them were very disturbing. Some of them were were just kind of nondescript or they weren't really worth talking about. But he clearly demonstrates what he thinks it means to be feminine or what he thinks it means to be a girl. And some of the things that he's talked about is, um, oh, being so scared of bugs. And there was a video where he says that we need to normalize um, girls having bulges. Yep, in tight leather shorts. And uh, he basically dons this character of being a ditz, of being a floosy, of being this kind of airheaded child. I mean, he dresses like a young girl and he is celebrated by female organizations and by corporations for doing this, for displaying what honestly is a very offensive, very condescending, very patronizing, very infantilizing depiction of what it means to be a girl or to be a woman. He has gotten millions of dollars in sponsorships, millions and millions of followers. He is influencing young people, young girls in particular, to imagine that this is what it means to be feminine. That to be a girl isn't really anything substantive. It isn't anything biological. It isn't anything real. It's something that you can take on and put off. 
You can become a girl just by wearing lipstick, by growing out your hair. It doesn't matter if you have male genitalia. It doesn't matter if you have male DNA. It doesn't matter if you have a male body. It doesn't matter if you have a five o'clock shadow. It doesn't matter if you have every indication of being a male. You can still be a woman because it is something as superficial as wearing a skirt. That apparently is where progressivism has taken us. It's so progressive that we have completely forgotten one of the most fundamental tenets of reality, actually the foundation of all of human existence. And that is that there is male and there is female and there are innate differences. All of us exist because of the innate differences between male and female. And so this person is a representation of the denial of reality and the celebration and the glorification of the denial of reality. This person is a manifestation of Romans 1, We are exchanging the truth of God for a lie. We are deluding our minds because of sin, because of an exchange of the God of scripture for the God of self. And when it becomes lucrative to do that, I think that that's a really good symbol, a really good indication of just how far our culture has gone. And Dylan celebrated Um, What has now been 365 days of transition during this transition, he hasn't just socially transitioned, trying to go by she, her pronouns, which, of course, I will not honor because I believe that Dylan is made purposely in the image of God as a male. And because I'd rather honor God than affirm his feelings, I am going to use the pronouns that correspond to his pronouns purposely created biology. Um, But he has also tried to physically transition. And so he's gone through facial feminization surgery. And that entails, you know, um, trying to shave down the brow ridge, trying to make the jaw less pronounced, the eyebrows a little bit raised up, the lips a little bit fuller, probably shaving down the Adam's apple, all things that you don't have to do if you are a female, by the way. Um, So he is influencing millions and millions of young people to think that this is normal, to think that this is how you get affirmation. This is how you become liked. This is how you become a celebrity by fundamentally denying who you are, hating how God made you and trying and ultimately failing to change it. And so he celebrated now what has been a year of transition He performed this one night only variety show called Day 365 Live to celebrate his 365th day of girlhood at the Rainbow Room in New York. Um, The event was hosted by Dylan and featured many other quote unquote queer icons and Broadway performers. You'll remember that Dylan Mulvaney um, is or was a Broadway performer, very, very talented, just a beautiful voice, a very talented actor. Take from that what you will. And then um, has now attempted to transition into a girl, into a woman. Uh, the 80-minute cabaret began with a pre-recorded clip of Rachel Brosnahan, who is the marvelous Mrs. Maisel, comforting Mulvaney in her dressing room. Or I guess this is a quote from Variety. Is it her dressing room? I don't know if it's referring to Rachel, who was her, or Mulvaney, who would actually be his. From there, Mulvaney eagerly entered from the balcony at the back of the Rainbow Room and sang a series of Kate Bush covers, um, which we'll play you a little bit of that. Um, And then uh, at one point in the show, at one point in the show, he plays a compilation video of right-wing commentators talking about him in a way that he deems hateful. And um, I will just say, like, Relatable was snubbed. We were snubbed. We were excluded from this montage. He only included Daily Wire hosts and the things that they have said about him. Um, Some of the things were harsher than others, but every single thing that was said by each of the hosts, whether it was Candace or Matt Walsh or Ben or Michael, they were all true. They were all 100% true. And honestly, I was watching that and I was like, you know, as as much as I honestly, as much as I, I disagree with him and really hate what he's doing and how he's influencing people, like I don't want I don't want him to, you know, constantly be sad or depressed or whatever because of what other people are saying. What I do hope is that some of the true things that they are saying actually like plant a seed of reality in his mind and that he's actually influenced and impacted even in some small way by some of the very true things that he's saying. But he uses this as a, um, 
a way to kind of lead into the musical portion of this performance. It's very odd. Like, it's obviously very self-serving. This is all about self-worship and self-idolatry, right? I mean, we talked about this yesterday. When you elevate autonomy and authenticity above submission to truth, which ultimately is submission to Christ, then authenticity and autonomy become excuses to sin. Oh, I'm just being myself, so I'm going to identify however I want to identify however I feel on the inside. Autonomy. Oh, well, I have bodily autonomy, so I'm even going to sacrifice the life of my child on the altar of autonomy. Autonomy and authenticity can be very good things, but when they're not submitted to Christ, then they become idols that lead us to do very destructive things. And that's what we're seeing here, is that he has sacrificed reality, truth, his own body, his true identity on the altar of autonomy, on the altar of the God of self. And so I'm going to play you a clip. It's a little long, but I really want to respond to it. And I want to respond to it sincerely. So like it's cringe. Yes, it's cringe because he's acting and it's all about him and turns into this musical. And it's, it's just, it's just cringe in a lot of ways but like listen till the end and i do want to sincerely respond to what he says there here it is truthfully i don't know what their goal is but i do know how they make me feel now that i built up a thicker skin it doesn't hurt me do you want to feel how it feels do you want to know know that it doesn't hurt deal I'm making my response going forward it's not over explaining myself it's not pleading it's um it's not expecting kindness from someone who has no kindness to give my response is in the next joyous video that I make that's my response and if I only could I'd make a deal with God now get him to swap our places. Can we pause there? I'm gonna say something that might make people feel a little bit uncomfortable. Um, I'm trying really hard to maintain a relationship with God. And I don't think that he made a mistake with me. Um, and that maybe one day I will actually be grateful for being trans. That this isn't some curse, but it's just a different path to the same destination. All right, let me tell you why that makes me want to cry. And the part that I actually teared up at was not that last part. It was actually when he hit like a very beautiful low note when he was singing. The reason that that makes me cry is because estrogen has ruined his beautiful tenor male voice. And maybe that seems like a superficial thing to be sad about, but it actually has to do with the last thing he said is that, wow, God made this man so talented, so incredibly talented. Wow. He had a beautiful voice. Have you ever seen videos of him singing on Broadway in the Book of Mormon? Or I think he was in Spring Awakening. I don't know, some other shows. He is incredibly talented, a beautiful, booming, Broadway, male voice. It is extremely easy to see why he got as successful and as famous as he did. And now through hormones and through these surgeries, he has actually ruined his beautiful voice. He wants to be a soprano, Dylan. You'll never be a soprano. Like you'll never have the same voice that you did when you were living out as male. Because guess what? That is how God made you. That's how God made you. Yes, he did make you. He made you purposely and wonderfully in your mother's womb. That's what Psalm 139 tells us. And he did not make a mistake. He absolutely didn't make a mistake. You are 100% right about that. But the mistake that he did not make was in making you a male. And right now you are living in active rebellion to his creation. You are living in active rebellion to how God made you. Look, God is not endorsing or affirming the confusion or the delusion that you say that you have in your mind. Like good and evil exist. God and Satan exist. And Satan is the author of confusion. God is not. God is the author, the source, the bringer of peace. And what he wants is for you to have peace with your body. 
to have peace with the biology that he gave you that will not happen through surgery, that will not happen through hormones because you are simply not female. You will never be a woman. You will never be a girl. I know that there are people around the world who are applauding you, who are telling you that they're celebrating your femininity, celebrating your femaleness. But Dylan, at the end of the day, God made you a man and that is a good thing. You have value. You have innate worth as an image bearer of God. And I want that to be where your identity lies. I want you to know that Christ died to save you, to make you new, that what people don't say, what I say, what anyone says, it doesn't ultimately matter, but not because you're actually a woman, but because your identity can be in something higher than that and not in this imaginary transition that you think is happening, but actually in the God who made you. It can be in Christ who died to save you, who died to save me. Like, do you, you're looking for satisfaction, Dylan. You're looking for love. You're looking for affirmation. You're looking for acceptance. You're not going to find it in this. It's going to feel good for a little while. I know it does. It feels good to be patted on the back. It feels good to get all of this money, to get this, these accolades. I understand that feels good. That will fade. Here today, gone tomorrow. But eternity is a really long time. Have you thought about that? Have you thought about what's going to happen when this life is over? Have you thought about the bigger picture here? Have you heard the gospel, Dylan, like the real gospel, that we are sinners, that we are all far from God, no matter how we identify, no matter what our sexual preferences are, every single one of us? Attracted to male, female, confused about gender, not confused about gender. We're all separated from God because God is holy and perfect and we are sinful. Therefore, we need a reconciliation to God. We need a bridge to God. We need to be brought to God. And that is why Jesus came. That's why God became flesh and dwelt among us, died a death that he did not have to die on The cross for our sake, a sacrifice that then paid for our sins. If by grace through faith, we trust in him for that. That's the good news that you're looking for. That's the love that you're trying and failing to find in all the wrong places. You will not find your identity, your satisfaction, the affirmation that you're truly seeking, the contentment that you long for, the peace that you are looking for outside of Christ, Dylan. And I will tell you. Like if you, and I pray by the grace of God, you do ever come to Christ, like just like all of us, he's not going to leave you as you are. Like he will by grace, through the power of his Holy Spirit seek to change your heart and to reconcile your mind with your body because he made it good. He made it good. He made your beautiful male voice good. He made your male body good good. The first chapter of the first book of the Bible tells us that, Dylan. And I hope that you can have a relationship with God. You can only do that through Christ. And just know that Christ promises never to leave us as we are. And it is worth it. You're trying and failing to find joy where it just does not exist. And I pray you find it in the God who created you, in the Jesus who died to save you. Um, I encourage you, Dylan, read the book of John. I encourage you, read Ephesians 2. Learn the gospel. Gosh, I I pray that you do. I pray. I really do. I pray that you. That's that's what I want for Dylan. I mean, you know, we can laugh at all the ridiculous things that he says. We can cringe. It's cringeworthy. And we can talk about him being offensive. It is offensive. It's an offensive caricature of women. We can talk about how harmful his influence is. It is extremely harmful. Um, And we can laugh and make fun and all that. You know, I think there's honestly a place for that. But at the end of the day, the best thing that can happen is for him to repent. That's what I want. Um, And so that clip made me sad for a variety of reasons. But I just want, want him to know. I want him to know there is a God who cares, who made him good. Um, yeah, I guess that's all I have to say on that. There's a, there's a lot more that I could say about him, but that's my, a lot of people have conveyed messages to Dylan. That's my sincere message. And that's my like deepest hope 
for for him. And I hope that we um, are all praying that honestly. And I hope that he has people in his life that are praying that too. That's the that's how we love. By the way, that's how we love. I know a lot of people say, well, loving people is using their preferred pronouns. Loving people is affirming their delusion. No, it's not. That's you thinking that you're more loving than God. You can't be more loving than God. First John four eight. God is love. Okay, God is love. And then Genesis 127, God made the male and female. So if you're disagreeing with Genesis 127, then you think that you are more loving than the God who in 1 John 4, 8 says that he is love. The Bible doesn't say you are love. So don't idolize yourself by thinking that you can be more compassionate than God by disagreeing with him. The most loving thing we can always do is agree with God, both in our lives and in how we speak to other people. And so I'm sorry, I'm not going to fall into that fake empathy trap that says in order to love someone, you have to affirm lies. I'm not more loving than God. I think the best thing I can do is probably agree with him. Um, all right, let's move into our next our next story of craziness. People who absolutely need Jesus, as we all do. But first, let me pause and tell you about my next sponsor for the day. It's one of my favorite sponsors of all time. And that is Carly Jean Los Angeles. This is a Christian pro-life company run by Carly Jean herself. It's a capsule clothing company. So they've got really simple pieces for any stage of life and really any season of the year. I love their clothes under my my blanket that I'm wearing for warmth. I am wearing all Carly Jean. So I've got my Carly Jean shirt on. Even this tank top that I'm wearing underneath my shirt is Carly Jean. And then my favorite jeans ever, um, my Carly Jean Los Angeles jeans. I only wear Carly Jean Los Angeles jeans only because they're so comfortable. Somehow they have mastered having jeans that are stretchy without like getting super loose and gross throughout the day. You know what I'm talking about? Like without losing their shape. I just love Carly Jean clothes. I can wear them at any stage of life and feel really good about what I'm wearing. If you go to CarlyGLosAngeles.com and use code Allie B at checkout, that's Allie B for 20% off, excluding final sale items. Promo code Allie B for 20% off, always free shipping over $100. Allie B at CarlyGLosAngeles.com for that discount. CarlyGLosAngeles.com, code Allie B. Okay, I've been wanting to talk about this strange story for a little while. You know, on this show, we talk a lot about the dangers of commercial surrogacy and the ethics behind sperm donation, egg donation, even IVF. Basically, I think in most of these situations, um, while I know there's a lot of people who listen to the show, who watch the show, who have used IVF, so please go back and listen to some previous episodes that I've done on IVF and don't hear me say that I think that you are a bad mom or that your kids just aren't as just as precious and as made in the image of God as every other child. That's not what I'm saying. What I am saying is that in IVF and in all of these fertility treatments, very often the rights of children are denied. They're completely ignored, especially when you have IVF situations where you're making many embryo embryos that you never intend to plant. Um, there are risks to IVF, especially when it comes to the mother, but also when it comes um, to the child. And so these are risks that you are, that we are placing on children you know, without their consent. All I'm saying is that these are things that we should think about. There are millions and millions of frozen embryos throughout the country that will stay frozen indefinitely. I mean, if we believe that life begins at conception, we have a problem with that. And life does begin at conception. It's not even just a belief. It's a scientific fact. Now, you might not believe that that those lives that begun at conception have any value. And you'll have to explain to me philosophically why you believe that, but it is life. And so we have all of these tiny human lives that are sitting on ice throughout the country. That's a consequence of IVF. IVF makes the fertility industry, big fertility, as many like to say, um, a lot of money. So does sperm donation. So does egg donation. Sperm donation um, is the... Um, is the purposeful abandonment of your children. And so is egg donation. You're sending your future children off with no intention to care for them. That's abandonment, all right? Um, I believe it's 1 Timothy 5.8 says, not taking care of your family is worse than being an unbeliever. I mean, that's abandonment. That's not to say that there is no grace or redemption for those things, but it is absolutely sinful. And not to mention the repercussions that that has on a child who may never know who their mother or father is. That's an innate need for all of us. Even adopted kids, they have that primal wound of being taken away from their 
um, biological connections. And while adoption is beautiful and redemptive and adopted kids can have wonderful, wonderful relationships with their parents, they're is still a drive in many adopted kids to know where they come from. Where did I get my traits from? Who are my ancestors? Who is who is my mom? What were the circumstances surrounding my conception, pregnancy, birth, all of that? We, it's just innate. We want to know from where we come. I honestly think that is a huge part of why God calls himself father, because even for the orphan, he ultimately is our source. He ultimately is our place of belonging. He ultimately is our home and our um, protection. Um, And then there's the whole issue of commercialized surrogacy. And that is, I think, a heinous, heinous industry that basically is sex trafficking, where poor, very often poor women, low income women are pressured or feel pressured to sell their bodies for money. That's not that different than prostitution. Technically, there's consent there. But what puts you in the kind of situation to where you are willing to sacrifice your body to get paid? And then again, even if there is consent, one, that doesn't make it moral. I don't believe in consent-based morality. Consent is one of the factors that you consider when you're considering whether something is right or wrong, but also the child certainly doesn't consent. There are many, many issues and consequences, physical consequences, emotional and mental consequences that come from buying the eggs from one woman. If you're talking about two gay men, like we're about to talk about buying the eggs from one woman and implanting them in the uterus of another woman and then taking that child away immediately, both from his biological mother and from the woman who carried him for nine months, whose smell and feel and heartbeat he knows, whose touch he innately longs for, taking him away sooner than we take a puppy away from his mother, um, and then raising them without a mom. And then, of course, the same issue in a lot of ways comes up when you're talking about two women using sperm donation, IVF, and all of that, you are purposely taking a child away from his father. When it comes to two men, you are purposely taking a child away from his mother. And as we talked about earlier this week, two men might be great dads, two women might be great moms. They can never be a mom or a dad. And it's different than adoption because rather than using the circumstances that already exist to try to help the life that's been created, you're actually creating a life with the purpose of taking them away from a mom or dad. And I'm sorry, but that is selfish. It's selfish. That's unethical. That's immoral. That's wrong. It's actually evil. It's evil to purposely take a child away from his mom or his dad and to think that you can serve the same role as a woman or, I mean, as a, as a man, a mom or a dad, it's just, it's wrong. It's wrong. Um, there will always be something missing, even if those parents are great parents, which they absolutely can be. They still can't be a mom or a dad. So that is part of what makes this story about Shane Dawson and his husband, his partner, Ryland Adams. Um, they are going through the surrogacy process. Now, Shane Dawson is a f- YouTube celebrity. He's been around a long time. I think his fame has kind of waxed and waned over the years. Um, but they're trying to have a child together or maybe multiple children. And there are lots of things that are disturbing about this in addition to what I just explained. They've created 12 embryos in total. They've joked about which ones will be born and which ones will be discarded. Um, and in their announcement video, they made jokes about cheaper by the dozen. Um, uh, you know, saying, oh, we, you know, we made 12 embryos cheaper by the dozen. Ha ha ha. They're laughing on video as they're talking about this. Um, they laughed about the fact that each of the babies that they created, the 12 embryos that they created has a barcode and, um, they're talking about having four boys and the others or girls. And then Ryland says of the four boys, which one do we choose? So you see right there, like the ethical issue. So you're choosing children. I mean, a lot of, a lot of IVF and especially when it comes to like surrogacy, we don't realize this, but there's a lot of eugenics that are involved there because the embryos are tested. Oh, this one has some kind of special need. This one has a chromosomal disorder. This one's a girl, this one's a boy. And the two men or two women can say, not all do this, but they can say, oh, well, we definitely don't want a special need. We definitely don't want a disability. We definitely don't want a girl. We definitely don't want a boy. And they can choose to then kill those embryos based on the traits that they want or don't want. I mean, 
do we not see like the issues going on here but we're just supposed to pretend like oh love is love yay like your instagram posts i see christians liking these instagram posts and most people just to be honest just like haven't really thought about it oh we do have a little video a short video of this happening so um here's their little youtube video announcing all this she actually had 35 eggs on this retrieval cycle and of those we each have six that are what do they call them the m the embryos that are good to go to pregnancy. So what do we do? How do we choose? I don't know. Do we have a battle? <laughs> like, do we make the eggs like fight? I'm curious though, I wanna to talk to our doctor and know like, okay, of the four boys, which boy do we choose? You know, like. I don't like playing God. I don't either. <laughs> but no, I'm just saying, like, I wonder if there's like the biopsies or the lab results tell them we which one. We spin the wheel and we'll put a, a barcode on each side. Okay. <laughs> Okay, like, they're talking about people here. Like, you get that, right? They're talking about people. People who do not ask to be created, who do not ask to be then taken away from their biological mother, the egg donor, and then implanted in another stranger, and then taken away from both of those women to be raised by these people. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my gosh. And so, again, you see the eugenics in in this, and he says, I don't like playing God. You're already playing God, Shane. You're already playing God. That's exactly what you're doing. You're playing God by creating these children outside of the natural process. I don't like playing God, and yet you will. You're not going to implant all of those embryos, are you? You're not going to have 12 children. So you will be playing God. I don't like playing God. That's, I mean, that's like Pontius Pilate trying to wash his hands after, uh, you know, after approving the crucifixion of Jesus. Ain't going to work. Ain't going to work. Doesn't fly. Um, there is a different video from March um, of last year. They talked about starting their baby making process. They joked about purchasing the mother of their children. They said, we chose an egg donor. It was very strange to click purchase on our child's mother. Purchase, we bought our mommy. So in humor, there's a lot. There's, there's a lot of truth in humor there. And I wish that they were making a joke about it in order to make a point about how unethical all of this is. But of course, they're not. Um, so this is not the only disturbing part of this, though. The disturbing part of this is Shane's history and the things that he has said specifically about children, very disturbing things about children. So when it comes to this process of commercial surrogacy, buying eggs, renting wombs, there's no background check. Anyone can do it. In adoption, you have to have a background check, right? You have to have a background check. And even if you're going through a divorce and you have a biological child, okay? And you got a mom and a dad in divorce court. Still, like the judge is looking at the different aspects. I'm not saying, and we could get into all the intricacies and the problems of divorce court and like our justice system when it comes to all of that. So I'm not pretending like this is a perfect process, but judges are assessing in general, the character of each parent, they're looking at their background, they're looking at their history, and they are deciding the custody very often based on a number of these factors. Even when that child is biologically either the mom or the dad, so that does not guarantee that that child gets to go with them. And yet when it comes to creating these children through surrogacy, through egg and sperm donation, the people doing so don't go through a background check, at least as far as I can tell. And the vast majority of these cases, anyone can do it. Is that not an issue? And actually, we already see in the adoption process, we talked about that horrible story out of Georgia where the two men um, raped and trafficked their boys um, and they adopted their kids from a special needs Christian adoption agency. So already, like, we see that there's just not enough protection of children in our country. We absolutely know that. But especially when it comes to big fertility, there's so much money and there's so much power in it. And there's so much public support for it because people are stupid that no one is even asking these questions. No one is even asking, well, should, should Shane Dawson have a child? I mean, should someone who makes the comments that I'm about to read have a child? And I'll just let you know, they're disturbing. So let's go through some of them. In 2014, Shane, so he's a YouTube star, remember that. Shane was recording an episode of his first podcast, Shane and Friends. It's now deleted, but this has been reported on several times. When he began telling a seemingly innocent story about an encounter with a six-year-old fan, and then a six-year-old, all right? And then he talks about um, in this episode, quote, he says, she shows me her Instagram 
First of all, I don't know if I'm allowed to say this, Shane Dawson says, but she was kind of sexy. He is talking about a six-year-old, okay? This was in 2014. Then Shane attempted to defend pedophilia in this episode as a fetish. He says, having sex with children or touching children is terrible and you should not do it. He responded, but here's my thing. People have foot fetishes. People have fetishes about everything. So like, okay, just if we just ended there, which unfortunately, like that's not the end of the history of his comments. Like, would you say that this is a person who should be talking about creating a child? And by the way, not this is there's also an increased risk here because not all of these embryos, I don't even know who fertilized these embryos. I'm guessing one one of the guys fertilized some of the embryos, one of the guys fertilized another embryo. Look, the non-biological parent in any household, this is just statistically true. I'm not saying it's true in close to every case, but statistically true is the biggest threat to a child's safety. It's just the truth. And so you have an added risk here. You already have someone who has a history of making these kind of comments. Then you have an added risk that he might be in the home with someone who is not even biologically related to him. This is a problem. I'm concerned. Um, He made an apology video in 2018 saying he grew up and changed his content. And um, he says that he even plays the section of the podcast in his apology in which he said that he This is just disturbing. He says that he Googled images of a naked baby and jokes that he thought that it was sexy. All right. In 2020, a clip of Shane resurfaced on Twitter that showed himself pretending to, um, again, disturbing, masturbate in front of a poster of Willow Smith. She was 11 years old um, in this poster, of course. um, uh, A lot of people, including Willow Smith's brother, Jaden Smith, said like called him out was like i'm disgusted by you why are you sexualizing my sister um and then there are some other clips going around um there uh is a clip where he said that he was video chatting with a young teenager who was a fan of his he kept telling her to twerk and after she finally twerked for the camera he told her to show herself in another video probably from his youtube video or channel years ago he showed a series of photos featuring young girls wearing some of his merch and then he jokes this is so disturbing this is the guy that we're talking about who is talking about having children he joked in that video, I would rape all of you. Um, in an audio clip from Shane and Friends, this is from the, an, um, an Evie article, Evie magazine. He says, I, if I had a child, which is the same as a dog to me, well, I guess when they're a baby, you don't want to picture someone effing them. But he is talking about how apparently he is also maybe into bestiality. That's something he's talked about multiple times. Um and then he, his co-host on the show actually shared a news story of a man who raped, I can't even say, I can't even say, I, I can't even say, it's disturbing. His co-host shared a story of terrible, terrible child sexual abuse and Shane laughed and said, that's amazing. And I'm not even going to go, I'm not even going to go through the rest of the stuff. Um, basically, he says that he's joking about all of this, whether he's talking about bestiality or whether he's talking about pedophilia. There are actually other things that he has said over the years that aren't even included in this. And I'm not even going to get into all the stuff that was included in our examples because it's so disturbing. But this person is now joking about buying the mother of their children and trying to pick their, imp- like, why don't we have background checks? Like, why is this something that anyone's applauding? You don't have a right to create children. You don't. You should not have a right. Like, shouldn't we have some laws and restrictions? You know, most most countries in Europe are heavily restrictive when it comes to the fertility industry and certainly surrogacy. Like, people in America think, oh, if we were just more like Europe. Look, Europe has a lot more common sense restrictions on some things than we do. I mean, so does China. I mean, China's a dictatorship and I like would never, ever praise China. But there are some things that I'm like, that makes more sense than what we in America do. Like America is honestly one of the most liberal countries when it comes to this stuff, when it comes to abortion, when it comes to transgenderism in the world. And then you wonder why there's a conservative backlash. Yeah, because we have literally the craziest progressives in the world in our freaking country. So, of course, there's going to be a backlash to it. There's going to be a backlash to people like Shane Dawson being able to buy children. Yeah, I have a problem with this. We should all have a problem with this. All right, before we move on to our next 
Short part, let me tell you about our next sponsor for the day. And that is Patriot Mobile. All right. If you are tired of spending your money on a cell service provider that hates you, that is sending your money to organizations, politicians that you don't like, then you should start using Patriot Mobile. They're America's only Christian conservative wireless provider. It offers dependable nationwide coverage on all three major networks so you can get the best possible service in your area. Plus, they offer a coverage guarantee. If you're not happy with your coverage, you can switch to a different network for free without changing carriers. Also, you just know when you're spending your money on Patriot Mobile, when you have them supporting you, you are also supporting free speech, the sanctity of life, the Second Amendment, our military, our first responders. These are all things that Patriot Mobile intentionally support. So go to PatriotMobile.com slash Allie or call 878-PATRIOT. You'll get free activation today with offer code Allie. PatriotMobile.com slash Allie. Use offer code Allie at checkout. So we got a lot of confusion in the world. Um, A lot of things have changed for the worse. But one thing that hasn't changed is that Christians are pushed to the margins and are seen as the ones causing all of the problems. And this is relatively new in our country, at least over the past few decades. But it is not new in the history of the church. It is not true in the history of the world. I mean, Christians for a very long time have been blamed for the world's problems or for a country's problems or for um, rebellion against tyrants like Nero, which, by the way, Christians have been in rebellion to many tyrants throughout history. So that's fair. But um, very often unfairly, unjustly maligned and mistreated when really Christians are typically the ones on the front lines of pushing back against the madness and the people who are mad, the people who are crazy are very upset with that. That, of course, is what's happening in the story that maybe you've heard about in Arizona. So the Arizona School Board ends an agreement with a Christian college, which is um, uh, Arizona Christian University, great university, um, and uh, because they do not want ACU's student teachers to be placed in its schools for field experience, specifically because they are Christian. So this happened on February 23rd. The board agreed on a motion to dissolve the partnership. The school board said this, the board's decision to discontinue its partnership with Arizona Christian University was based on the board's commitment to create a safe place for our LGBTQ plus students. So they're just coming out and saying it. It's because of their religious beliefs. It's because they believe in what humans have believed for thousands and thousands and thousands of years that we are male and female. Uh, Staff and community. This includes not knowingly entering into partnerships with any organization that explicitly discriminates against protected classes covered by our non-discrimination policy. So Christians, Christians. I highly doubt they would be dissolving any kind of partnership with some kind of Muslim organization. School board member Tamilia Valenzuela will put her picture up. Stable individual. If you're listening to this, she wears um, uh, cat ears, just still on the regular. Uh, Who was, uh, she was also in the school board meeting, she was wearing these cat ears, but also in this picture. She says, um, well, she describes herself first. She describes herself as bilingual, disabled, neurodivergent. Queer black Latina who loves a good hot wing. Oh, I think you love more than one, but only with the right ranch and things that sparkle. She said, while I full heartedly believe in religious freedom and people being able to practice whatever faith they have, I had some concerns regarding regarding looking at this particular institution and so and he, she said, my concern is when I go to Arizona Christian University's website, they're committed to Jesus Christ, accomplishing his will and advancements on earth that is in heaven. Part of their values is to transform the culture with truth by promoting the biblically informed values that are foundational to Western civilization. Love it. Including the centrality of family. Love it. Traditional sexual immorality. Great. And lifelong marriage between one man and one woman. Awesome. That's Christianity for you has been for 2000 years and many other cultures and religions as well. Hold to this. I want to know how bringing teachers from an institution that is ingrained in their value so directly brings. There's a lot of things that she's saying that don't make sense. And it's a little concerning that she's part of the educational an educational institution brings impact to three of your board members who are part of the LGBT community. Um, She also said, at some point, we need to get real with ourselves and take a look at who we're making legal contracts with and message 
and the message that is sending to our community because that makes me feel like I could not be safe in the school district. So once again, when it comes to all of this progressive stuff, um, the progressive revolution that happens in schools and in every institution, it's never about competence. Like it's never about excellence. It's never even really about safety, not actual safety. It's about feelings. And so they don't say these ACU student teachers did a bad job or they're not good. Um, they're not good teachers or they weren't providing an excellent service or that they didn't give any examples of how teachers made these kids unsafe or were unloving to them or unaccepting to them or just did about, they don't, they don't mention that because it's not about that. It's about their beliefs. It's about them being Christian. They're open about that. They're explicit about that. Like, can you imagine openly doing this towards any other religion and getting away with it? No, but they're applauded for it. And so look, I don't believe in putting on this victim complex. I just believe in like seeing reality. This is what it is. This is what it has been for a very long time. And I'm not going to bemoan it. Yeah, I think it's unfair. It's un-American. And it's just stupid. Some of the only sane people in this world are Christians who actually like can tell up from down. But I do think, I mean, but, but I will say though, like on a positive note, is that because this is the history of the church is being treated in this way and much, much, much more harshly and not just in history, but still happening today, like we don't, we don't have to be depressed over it. Actually, the church can thrive on the margins. I think that there are going to be a lot of really deadly and destructive consequences as we're already seeing to pulling Christianity out of the mainstream. However, however, I do think that it's an exciting moment for the church. I think it is a moment of separating wheat from chaff. It's less convenient. It's less comfortable. It's much more difficult today to be a Christian, to be an actual Christian, to stand up for Christian morality in the face of the trans agenda, in the face of the redefinition of marriage and the family, in the face of the way the cultural winds are blowing, it's much harder to swim upstream like human salmon than it was in America even 20 years ago. And so, I mean, this is a time for the church to really shine. And of course, the church has always shown. But again, when it's pushed to the margins, when the world around us is so dark, when more and more institutions are turning off the light, then it is an opportunity to shine even brighter to be even bolder, to really count the cost as our brothers and sisters in Christ have been doing for a long time around the world. Like religious liberty, equal treatment under the law, having a Christian value system, even where non-Christians exist, is not normal universally. It is not normal historically. America has been, and the Western civilization, but particularly America has been very unique in that, extremely unique in that. And we've had a lot of, um, like we've had a, a, a lot of positive effects because of that. And now that's going away. And I'm not saying we shouldn't push back. You know that I think that we should. But instead of just saying, oh, this is so sad. Now is the time to say, you know what? I'm counting the cost. This is what it means to be a Christian, to be in the world and not of the world. And to stand out and to constantly be maligned for simply saying that, which is true. And by the way, this works out for us an eternal glory that far outweighs any hardship or trial that we endure because of our faith here today. I mean, Jesus promises us the world hates you because it hated me first. In this world, you will have trouble, but take heart. I've overcome the world. So we're actually guaranteed a form of persecution. We're actually guaranteed a form of discrimination. We're guaranteed it's not the same persecution as our, you know, as Christians in different parts of the world are enduring, but like we are guaranteed some of the things like what Jack Phillips has endured for the last 10 years. That's actually part of the package. So let's get comfortable being uncomfortable and just realize that this is normal. Yes, push back through politics and culture wars and through raising your family, discipling your family and doing everything you can to stand for truth 100%. But just know like this is kind of probably the way that it's going. Um, and this is all the more reason, all the more exciting, I think, reason to, um, to stand firm and to truly stake your place. Um, all right. Also, oh, I just wanted to say like one last thing on that. I thought it was really interesting. Rain Wilson, who played Dwight on The Office, 
Um, I like him much better as Dwight than as Rain Wilson. Um, he says some things that I'm like, what? But he does say something that I thought was that I thought was good. He tweeted on March 11th. I do think there's an anti-Christian bias in Hollywood. As soon as the David character in The Last of Us started reading from the Bible, I knew he was going to be a horrific villain. Could there be a Bible reading preacher on a show who's actually loving and kind? I appreciate him saying that. I mean, obviously, we've known this. This has been apparent for decades in Hollywood um, that Christianity either is like entirely ignored or it is depicted as something that is evil and perverse and so he makes a good point now of course hollywood's definition of like a loving and kind christian is one that affirms everything that a world affirm uh, that the world affirms they're not going to show like a loving and kind christian who holds to traditional marriage that is evil to them so they just like are unable to do that but i appreciate rain wilson pointing this out because it's absolutely it's absolutely true and it's just like hollywood they're so in their bubble the the liberals who live on the coast of the country, we know everything about them because they're represented in media so much. They know nothing about us. And so, like, they just make really dumb characterizations and assessments. That's why we know so much more <laughs> than them about everything because they're in their little silos. And we are forced out of our silos because every institution that we are part of, every show that we watch is at least against some of our values. And so that just makes us... It makes us tougher. It also makes us more thoughtful. It makes us um, a lot more effective in debate, too. Um, all right. Wow. We covered a lot of ground today. Um, basically, I think the theme is just that the gospel wins, God wins, and we don't have to worry about what, where the world goes or what they think of us because God's victory is sure, and we can have a lot of hope and a lot of optimism in that. That's not where we were go going to go in today's episode. We actually had a whole other thing planned, but then we realized we need more research. So we'll do that next week. All right. Last episode, I think, I think last episode in this studio, we'll be on our new set on Monday. It'll be really exciting. Let me tell you about our last sponsor for the day. And that is Birch Gold. All right. We talked about the bank runs and all that crazy stuff um, on Monday, what was really happening with Silicon Valley Bank and what you heard my guests say, what I've heard a lot of financial experts say is that you need to get your hands on hard assets. You need to invest in things like gold. With Birch Gold, you can get a free safe. You can get a free safe to store your gold in on qualifying purchases from Birch Gold Group. Now through March 31st, they'll ship a free safe directly to your door. That's an amazing deal. Just text Allie to 989-898. Get your free info kit on gold. Claim eligibility for your free safe. Birch Gold is awesome. They've got an A-plus rating with the Better Business Bureau. They've got thousands of satisfied customers. Just make sure that your family, your savings are protected by investing in gold. Go uh, or text Allie to 989-898 for your free info kit. Claim eligibility for your free home safe by March 31st on qualifying purchases. Text Allie to 989-898. All right. That's all we've got for you today. Um, thanks so much for listening and for watching. Please leave us a five-star review if you haven't done so already. That means so much to me. Wherever you listen, subscribe on YouTube, all that good stuff. And remember to uh, look out for our new merch that's coming out. I'll post about it on Instagram and I'll post the links and all that good stuff. All right. Next week will be a party. It'll be fun. And uh, let's see. Do I have anything else to say? I think that's it. Okay. Have a great weekend. See y'all Monday.